So we're going to check out the Marshall Super Lead and all the changes that were made to it those first classic years. Uh, we're going to check out 67 to 74 and survey how all those changes uh, influenced the sound. Now, there have been done a number of good and interesting works on this subject before. For instance, you have Ru Fremstedal and his survey of the 100 watt circuit. Uh, you have Clay Finley and his uh, Marshall 101. Uh, my contribution to this will, will be to, uh, to put all, all these vintages side by side and, and give you an overview, a very quick one. Now, some of the changes were made uh, during the year, but, but I'm going to present uh, typical vintages of 67 to, to 74. And as you know, Marshall, uh, it varied quite a lot, so, so keep that in mind. So, let's go. From the beginning, in 67, the Super Lead had a shared cathode, you know, like the Super Bass or, or the JTM45. But in 68, it was split, uh, which led to an increased gain and uh, an increased differentiation between the two channels. You could have a, a bright one and a, and a darker one. Then in 69, uh, the cathode resistor of V1B was increased. Uh, which, which led to a uh, decreased gain. The purpose of the coupling caps is to filter out any DC that may, may pass from the first stage to the next one. Uh, but it also functions as a high pass filter. So when, when, uh, when Marshall uh, decreased the value of the uh, bright channel coupling cap, uh, it made the amp thinner, but brighter, more, more presence and uh, sharper. At the mixer, the two channels are uh, summed to, to one signal, and, and uh, there is a gain loss uh, in that. Uh, and 67, Marshall had uh, 270 uh, resistors, uh, which they then increased to 470. And uh, with 470, uh, you have, have more gain compensation uh, than with 270. But there is an EQ uh, uh, influence as well. Uh, but for that, uh, sh check out Fremstedal or, or Findlay, uh, who have uh, great uh, explanations for that. In 67, you had no bypass cap on, on uh, the second preamp tube. Uh, that was introduced uh, in 68, uh, and, and, and it uh, led to an increase in gain, especially in, uh, in uh, higher mids and, and, and treble. And Marshall kept that uh, until uh, Mark II was introduced in 74 or some, somewhere around there. Uh, and, and obviously lost that, that gain or that uh, fatter sound. And, 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 and ma many people, uh, you know, they, they went from point to point to, uh, to a PCB, what is it called, printed circuit board uh, then. And, and, and uh, this, this change, omitting the uh, 0.68 cap, uh, is thought of to be uh, what has caused that confusion, that, that people think that uh, point to point would be better than PCB. And in 74, the cathode resistor of 820 uh, was increased to uh, 1000, uh, a very slight gain decrease. In 67, the tone stack components were, were the same as the super bass, but that was changed in the 68, uh, which led to more gain and uh, some other resonant frequencies in the tone controls. And uh, along with the uh, Mark II in 74, uh, the presence cap of 0.1 was increased to 0.68, uh, which took away some of the harshness. In 1968, the uh, output coupling caps or phase inverter coupling caps were reduced, uh, which, just like uh, the coupling caps uh, between V1 and V2, led to a thinner uh, but uh, a more uh, attack like sound. The bias resistors were uh, decreased in 1974 along with Mark II. Uh, and a lower value rolls off more high end. Uh, it's thought of that uh, the 220K uh, 
uh, works well with the EL34 and the 82K and other lower values works better with 6550. The negative feedback loop is an out of phase signal that is fed back to increase presence, but it also reduces gain, so a, a larger value of the uh, negative feedback resistor uh, reduces negative feedback, increases gain. Uh, and, and what tap uh, of the output transformer you, you uh, choose to uh, connect to uh, also influences because there is more voltage fed back from the uh, 16 ohm tap and, and the least voltage from the 4 ohm tap. So uh, the, the, the most gain you get from the 4 ohm tap and, and a 100k resistor which you had from uh, from 1971 and onwards. And when it comes to chokes, in 67 it was the Drake 352-114, uh, but in 68 the Dagnall C1999 became more common, but the Drake still still was there, and uh, probably the, 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 there was some radio spares that, that, that were, were still still in, in action all those years uh, as, as well uh, at, at different occurrence levels. Then uh, in uh, 71 the C2542 was introduced. And when it comes to output transformer in uh, 67 they were Drake, uh, but in 68 Dagnall became more common, the C1998 and then in 71 the C 2668 and also in the power transformer it was Drake in 1967 uh, but in 68 uh, the T2562 uh, diagonal laid down transformer uh, became common uh, and sometimes during uh, 1969 uh, this transformer turned into a stand-up version and then both both uh, versions uh, existed simultaneously, but, but the stand-up was more more common. Uh, and, and then in uh, 1974 for Mark II, there was a, a number of uh, other transformer transformers that uh, carried on. And when it comes to filtering, there was a huge variations uh, those first years, 67 and and 68 for the Zeppelin. Uh, so I'm not going to go into detail on, on that. You should check out uh, Fremstedal or, or, or Findi for that. Um, I can I can tell you that the uh, if you, if you have less lower filtering, you will have a, a more compressed tone. You will have a, a a fatter tone with less less attack. And if you have more filtering, you, you have a tighter, more focused sound that may, may, may seem harsh. Uh, and, and you can see here on, on, on this these, uh, uh, sheet where, where, where the changes occurred. So we have three columns left, power tubes, speakers and, and grill cloth. When it comes to the power tubes, uh, the, the EL34s that was used in the late 60s uh, did break uh, in shipping from uh, UK to the United States. So they opted for a, a solution which included 6550s instead, which was used throughout the, the 70s. Uh, when it comes to speakers, uh, in 67 the uh, heavy magnet greenbacks uh, had a 25 watt rating. Uh, that was increased to 30 watt in uh, 1968. Uh, the uh, pulsonic cones of, of, of the speakers uh, were used until 1973, and in 74 uh, there were instead uh, RIC1 cones with uh, the uh, cream back speakers that was or, or grey back speakers that were introduced then. When it comes to grill cloth uh, in 67 
or beginning of 67, it was a pinstripe that was used, which was kind of a car fabric like, which had a very, very uh, rolled off lots of highs and, and, and uh, sounded very hi fi. Uh, that was in 68 changed to basket weave. Uh, the more woody like, like a, the seat of, of a chair basically. Also rolled off a lot, lot, lot of highs. Uh, those, those were changed into checkerboard in, in, in 71 and that let, that uh, was a very uh, bright grid cloth that let uh, lots of frequencies through. All right, that's it. Now I want to hear what you think. Cheers.